The Bible says, The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come into his temple. There is somebody here this morning. The mountain that is mocking your prayer shall be leveled. This year, your heavens will open by fire. Every arrow of shame, the arrow of stagnancy, the arrow of impossibility, the arrow of poverty, the arrow of sickness that is designed to drag your destiny on the floor shall go back to the senders in the name of Jesus. With a very loud voice more than anyone around you, can you shout this loud and clear? Power! To move to the next level. Say that again loud and clear. Shout it with fire. Overshadow my life. In the name of Jesus. Power. To move to the next level. Overshadow my life in the name of Jesus. Power to move to the next level. Masika tanda ripoto kushi tayarama. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say this if you know that this particular prayer is for you. Say in the midst of adversity. I will prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the midst of adversity. I will prosper in the name of Jesus. In the midst of adversity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says God created the heaven and the earth. And by, by, and by the time you move to verse 2, it says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was there. And because darkness was there, the earth became formless. Because darkness was present, what God had in mind could not manifest. Not until he, he spoke and he said, let there be light. So the solution to the problem of darkness is light. You are going to shout this loud and clear. Darkness in any area of my life Hear the word of the Lord. Die in the name of Jesus. Darkness. Masiki tanda ributo In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you because you are the mighty God. We thank you because of this gathering, the gathering of your children. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for preserving our soul. If not for the Lord that is on our side, what will our Israel be saying today? The Bible says we are kept by the power of your word. We thank you for keeping us.
body, soul, and spirit. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. This day, as we look up to you, the blessings, the healing, the deliverance, the breakthrough, the prosperity that you have prepared for us, we shall receive it in the name of Jesus. No one will leave this place empty-handed. Our testimonies will multiply. Our breakthroughs will manifest. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. A fire amen. Please have your seats. I would like to appreciate our pastor, our father in the Lord, who God has ordained to bring us to this place. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. I pray that the grace of God upon your life will multiply in the name of Jesus. I have a very important assignment for us here today. I am not going to call it a sermon. I am going to call it a message. And any time you have the opportunity to listen to a message, either on the pulpit like this, or you are hearing it on the tape or CD, you must always look out for three things. Anytime you have the opportunity to listen to a message, a message is different from a sermon. <laughs> Anytime you have the opportunity of listening to a message, always look out for three things. Number one, the promises and the blessings to claim. Look out for it. Promises, blessings to claim. The second thing that you must look out for when you are listening to a message are the instructions to follow. Instructions that you need to follow. Because those who fly, they fly by instructions. And if you are going to be a flying eagle, not just a walking eagle, you must do it by instructions. And the third thing that you must look out for anytime you are listening to a message is what are the works of Satan that you need to destroy? Three things. Number one, promises to claim and blessings to receive. Number two is what? Instructions to follow. And number three is what? The works of Satan that you need to destroy. Jesus said, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So in this message, look out for these three things. I title it, Expelled from the School of Failure. Expelled from the School of of failure. In First Timothy chapter 6, a very popular scripture there. First Timothy chapter 6.
verse 12. Paul was talking here and he was talking to Christians, the body of Christ. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. We are unto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. We are commanded, we are instructed to fight the good fight of faith. If there is one thing that you must consciously fight against in your life, you see here, it is failure. Consciously, deliberately fight against. It is failure. Fighting failure from every angle is a fight of faith for a believer. Anywhere you see failure or you smell it, you are expected to confront it and fight it. Fight the good fight of faith. Fighting failure is an assignment that all of us must carry out. It is part of what we need to do as a believer. Why do we need to fight failure? It is because success in the kingdom is not automatic. Success in the kingdom must be pursued. Success and victory, they are like brother and sister. Anywhere you see success, you see victory. And anywhere you see victory, you see success. But that success will not come to you if you don't fight for it. You must pursue success by the help of the Holy Spirit. Those who succeed in destiny and those who succeed in the Bible, they are warriors. They are not sleepers. They are not victims of satanic manipulations. If we check through the Bible very well, those who succeed in their assignment, in destiny, in what God has called them to do, we will discover that they are all fighters. They are fighters in the spirit. And because of that, if you are going to succeed in life, you must be a fighter. And what you must fight is what? Failure. This year has been prophetically declared as our year of glorious manifestation. And I decree and declare that this year, whether the enemy likes it or not, you that is hearing me today, you will manifest powerfully. If that prayer is for you, shout a big amen. Let your amen be sound and with fire. Let your amen shake the heavens again. Because it is for one, it is for somebody, it is for one thing for somebody to be alive is another for the person to manifest. Those who are living, unfortunately, are not those who are manifesting. Those who are manifesting are those who are able to tap into the spiritual frequency and download God's revelation into their spirit man and begin to manifest like that. There was a time that Jesus entered into the boat with his disciples. And the Bible says he was sleeping. Those who have the power of God in their lives and those who understand their purpose, they are not troubled by anything. When others are being troubled, they are at peace because they know that they are connected to the divine power. Jesus was sleeping. In fact, the Bible says his, his head was on a pillow, which means that he was able to snore. All of a sudden, there was a storm. 
all of a sudden, the wind began to operate in a negative way. And the disciples tried and tried and tried with all their strength. They could not stop the operation of these negative things. So they have to go to Jesus and say, Master, <laughs> care is not that we perish. We are being troubled here and there, and you are sleeping. And you call yourself our master. You don't even care about us. A lot of believers, they behave like that. They were expecting the Lord to do something when God is expecting them to do something. So don't you care that this thing is about to destroy us? And the Bible says, and Jesus arose. Before he rebuked the wind and the storm, he rebuked the disciples first. He said, O ye of little faith, for how long have I been with you? That is, I have, I have manifested and you are following me. Why can't you manifest what I am manifesting? Why can't you behave the way I used to behave when there is storm, when there is problem? And the Bible says, Jesus now faced the storm and the wind and he said, be still. And for the very first time, everywhere remained calm. But it was what they said that I'm interested in. They said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Those are people that manifest. When you manifest glory, and you manifest power, people will say, what manner of man is this? Because what we cannot conquer, he easily conquered it. What we cannot arrest, look at how he arrested it. I'm praying for somebody here again. That this year, whether the enemy likes it or not, you will manifest powerfully. In the name of Jesus. The spirit that will stop many from manifesting is the spirit of failure. And that is why you must confront it and deal with it. Hear me this morning. There is a strong man behind every failure. You must bind that strong man. There is a covenant of failure. You must break that covenant from operating in your life. There is a curse of failure. You must break that curse before you live here today. There is a pattern for failure. You must disconnect yourself from that pattern. It may be happening to others, even in your family, but not you. There is an arrow of failure that many are going about with. You must send it back to the sender today. There is a voice of failure that is speaking to so many people. You must silence that voice forever. Joseph had a voice of failure. And that boy was saying, Joseph, come and lie with me. Come and lie with me. That voice is a voice of failure. But thank God that Joseph did not listen to that voice. There is a mindset of failure. You must disconnect yourself from that kind of mindset. The mindset that is always thinking impossibility. The mindset that is always thinking negativity. The mindset that is always saying, can any good thing come out of here? You must disconnect yourself from that kind of mindset. You cannot be thinking failure and expect to experience success and victory. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This day, whatever that represents failure in your life, as you shout three powerful amen, I command them to expire in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 There is a cause of failure. Reuben in the Bible was cast to fail. 
a curse was pronounced upon him by his father. He said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, an excellency of power, but unstable as water. He now said, thou shall not excel. If you like, put Reuben in the best school. Thou shall not excel. If you like, gather around Reuben and give him many inheritances. Thou shall not excel. Until Reuben breaks that curse, it will always be a failure in life. I'm praying for somebody here today. Every curse of failure that is fighting against your next level, I command it to break in the name of Jesus. I command it to break in the name of Jesus. I command it to break in the name of Jesus. Redemption gives you access to experience success every day of your life. Once you give your life to Jesus and you are a child of the kingdom, it gives you access to experience success every day. Not just once in a month or once in a year, but every day. Because the Bible says, you shall be like a tree that is planted in the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. And he says, his leaf also shall not wither. And he said, whatsoever, whatsoever he do it, shall what? Whatsoever, whatsoever he do it, shall prosper. Why? Because redemption gives you access to experience success every day of your life. But unfortunately for so many people, it is not so. When you look at so many that call themselves a believer, and you check their lives with what the Bible says here in Psalm 1 verse 3, you will discover that it is not so. The reality of this scripture is alien to so many Christians. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper has become just a confession but not something that they experience in reality. Why should a child of God fail when our Heavenly Father is not a failure? Why? Why should a child of God be at the back when God said, you shall be the head? Why? I want to give you this um, illustration. Actually, it's an experience that happened to a man of God. And from there, you will now discover the reason why a lot of believers, even though they confess powerful scriptures, but yet, that thing that they are confessing becomes a stranger in their life. This man of God was having serious trouble in his ministry, in his family. So he decided to go and seek the face of God. And he began to pray and fast. I think he did it for 14 days. 14 or 21 days, I can't remember now. It was during this prayer and fasting program that all of a sudden, Jesus walked into his room. You see, if you pray to the level that you are supposed to pray to, you will see Jesus. There are people that are seeing Jesus physically, not just in the gym. Jesus will walk into their room and begin to talk to them. But if your level of consecration and your prayer level has not gotten to that level, well, you will pray. No problem. But for you to see him, no way. Until you get to that level. This man of God prayed and prayed and prayed 
and Jesus physically, not in a dream, walked into his room. And Jesus said, I am here to give you answers to what you have been asking. And Jesus began to discuss with him. And he was enjoying what Jesus was saying. All of a sudden, from nowhere, a monkey that looks like a demon, a demon that looks like a monkey, just appear and stood between this man of God and Jesus. And Jesus kept on talking as if he didn't see the demon at all. And this demon began to bring out smoke. And as the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, this man of God could not hear what Jesus was saying. And it's as if Jesus was now moving far away, far away. He was expecting Jesus to say, Ah, Master, can't you see this demon that is disturbing us? But Jesus just kept on talking as if that demon did not exist. Then something I said to him that, Look, you have been praying and fasting all this while. And now look at Jesus. And now. You are not hearing what he's saying again. You better do something to this demon. And with holy anger, he shouted, You demon, I command you, get away from here in the name of Jesus. And the demon jumped up and rolled and disappeared. Then you could now hear Jesus again. And Jesus was now talking again. And he now said, Excuse me, sir. Jesus, excuse me. I have a question. Didn't you see? That demon that just left now. Jesus said, yes, I saw it. Ah. And you did not do anything about it. Jesus said, well, I don't have power to do it. He said, no, 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 no. Jesus, how can you say you don't have power? And that is not what I read in scripture. You said all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Jesus says, you are correct. I have all power in heaven, on earth, and everywhere. But that power, I didn't take it to heaven. I gave it to you. I gave it to the church. And Jesus now said, if you did not use that power, that will be the end. I will continue discussing. And when I finish the discussion, I will leave. It is not me that we lose. It is you. Amen. That man of God learns so many deep lessons about the operations in the realm of the spirit. That man of God learns that as a believer, you can suffer the way unbelievers suffer if you don't know what to do. That man learns that day that the powers of darkness feeds on our ignorance to cheat us as Christians. And you know the Bible says, my people perish. Not the people of the devil, but his own people. Not that they die, they perish. Perish is more terrible than die. Say, my people perish because they lack knowledge. That man of God learned that day that those things that we are afraid of are actually more afraid of us because of our position in Christ Jesus. Those things that you are scared of, if God opens your eyes, you will discover that they are more afraid of you than the way you are afraid of them. That man of God learned it that day. That man of God learned that your attitude towards the enemy will determine your success or your failure in life. If you confront them, they will run away. But if you leave them alone, they will mess you up. David saw Goliath. Saul saw Goliath. But the difference between Saul and David was attitude. Attitude. Saul saw Goliath and he ran. David saw Goliath and said, I am going to confront him. And I'm going to kill him. And I'm going to feed his head to the birds of the air. The difference between these two men is...
success or your failure in life. That man of God also learns that dark powers are not afraid to challenge you even though they know that they have been defeated. They are not afraid. They can challenge anybody, no matter the level of your anointing. The Bible told us that Jesus went into the wilderness. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And he was there fasting and praying. And he was there for 40 days. After 40 days, you would have, you would have thought that the person that will appear is an angel. But it was the devil. Someone that has been fasting for 40 days, 40 nights, and after the 40 days, the first person that came to challenge him was the devil. No matter the level of anointing, they will come to challenge because that is what is in their DNA. That man of God learned that day. Jesus was talking to him, and yet the demon was there to challenge. He learned that you must know what to do when the enemy confronts you. That man of God also learned that, that demons are real and that they are not a figment of man's imagination. Some will tell you all these things that you are talking about, spirit husband, spirit wife, it is just a figment of your imagination. That man of God saw that demon that day. That these things, they are real. And it is not just that somebody just cooked up. That man of God also learned that day that dark powers do have powers. But their powers are lesser powers. That man of God also learned that day that Jesus will not do for you what he has empowered you to do for yourself. I'm praying for somebody here today that any power that has vowed that you will not move to your next level and that you will not manifest this year, I command those powers to expire in the name of Jesus. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power that worketh not in God but in you. That is those things that you are praying for. Those things that you are expecting. God is going to answer you according to the power that is working in you. If that power that is working in you, you don't put it into practice, you don't activate it, the person becomes a failure. I'm praying again that every common power that is sponsoring failure into your life and destiny, I command them to scatter in the name of Jesus. I command him to scatter in the name of Jesus. I command him to scatter in the name of Jesus. Please, are you following me? In 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 16. Verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. It says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. A great door and effectual door is open. But at the door of that great door, there are many adversaries. The adversaries that were standing at the door of your success, they are not there to play with you. 
they are there to stop you from entering into your prepared breakthrough. The truth is this. The school of failure has so many students because many people are not ready yet to fight the adversaries that wants to stop them from entering into their door. That adversary is there to say, no, it is God that opened it, but I will not allow you to enter. It is a great door, yet I will not allow you to enter. It is an effectual door, but I am going to make sure that I stop you from entering. The adversaries that you fail to confront at the dumb mouth of your breakthrough will make you to remain a failure in life. Can you shout this loud and clear seven times? Say, I shall enter, I shall enter into my success. Into my success. Say it one more time. I shall enter into my Say it with fire. I shall enter into my Say it three times. Aha. Aha. If we are to describe what failure is according to the scriptures, how would you describe it? Because what many people call success according to the Bible is not success. Jesus gave us a parable of a man. I think it's in Luke chapter 9. He talks about this rich man. He had so many things in abundance. In fact, the Bible says, because of the breakthrough that he experienced, he said he wants to bring down his band and then expand it. If you look at that man, you cannot call that man a failure. Because he was a very smart man. He was very hardworking. He was rich. Very, very influential. If you look at all those qualities, you will say this man is a big success. But by the time Jesus will look at him, God said, you are a fool. Because he said to him, now, Amen. He said, my soul, relax. Enjoy. Sleep. You have labored. Now begin to enjoy your labor. And God said, thou fool. He said, this night, you will die. A fool before God is a resounding failure. So, if we are to describe what failure is, according to the Bible, how will you describe failure? I will tell you. According to the Bible, failure is catching nothing in the ocean of life. You throw your net into the ocean of life and then you catch nothing. Just like Peter. He said, we have toiled all night and we catch nothing. Failure is to catch nothing in the ocean of life. If your life is not making impact where you are, as a Christian, they could not see you as light and as salt before the almighty God. According to the scripture, the person is a resounding Failure. Who can you describe as a failure according to the Bible? Failure is staying at the entrance door of God's power. The person is not entering into it. He's just standing by the door. 
The person has now become like the Pharisees. They did not enter into the kingdom. And those who want to enter, they stop them. They are regarded as failure before the almighty God. Who is a failure according to the Bible? They are those who are burying their talent and gift. Those who have the gift, those who have the talent, but they did not make use of it. You can sing very well, but you are hiding. I am not going to join the choir. You are burying your talent. You are hiding your gift. That person is a failure before the almighty God. Who is a failure according to the scripture? Failure is to be lesser than what God has created you to be. God has ordained you to be an evangelist to the nations. But you just remain in your local area. And you said that, okay, God is using me in this area. I thank God. After all, in this locality, I, they can see the power of God walking through me when God has ordained you to move to the nations. God told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, I have ordained you to be a prophet unto nations. If Jeremiah should remain in one state, on one local government and is doing exploit and everybody is clapping. Jeremiah, we can see that you are moving in power and authority. Jeremiah, you are moving the whole community. People may be clapping for Jeremiah, but because God has ordained him to be a prophet unto nations, not unto a state. Before God, Jeremiah is a resounding failure. Mom may praise him. Mom may applaud him. Mom may say, Jeremiah is, is trying. But before the Almighty God, it's a failure. According to the scripture. Who is a failure? According to the scripture. A failure is someone that is living in the past. Living in the past. You are using the, the rear mirror. To, to, to passion your life, to tow your life, to move your life, you are always talking about the past, the past, the past, the past. When Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward to those things that are in your front. Who can we describe as a failure according to the Bible? They are those eating the bread of sorrow. Eating the bread of sorrow. Every time your head is always down. When they ask you, what's the problem? You can talk about all kinds of problems that surround you. You cannot point to the goodness and the mercy of God. It's like somebody who said, well, he went to meet a man of God. And he said, man of God, I am tired. I, I come to church. I, I pray my tithe. I do this. I do that. But, but. I am tired of everything. It's like nothing is working. I say, okay. Are you sure nothing is working? I say, yes. Nothing is working. It's okay. Let us analyze the things that are working. And then we will tell those things that are working to stop working. He now said, Oga, is your kidney working? Say, yeah, 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 it's working, it's working. <laughs> Is your eyes working? Say, ah, yes, yes, it's working, it's working. Hey, what of your ears? Ah, it's working, it's working. What of your brain? Ah, it's working. Okay, what are those things that are not working? Uh, there's no job. Uh, because of that, I can't even uh, rent a place. So, okay, now I'm going to pray that those things that are working should stop working. And those things that are not working should start working. He said, sir, I understand. <laughs> Amen. Eating the bread of sorrow. 
always sorrowful. When you look around, and the Bible says rejoice always, and I say again, rejoice. You are just looking at the problems. Just looking at the mountains. Eating the bread of sorrow. That kind of a person before the almighty God is a failure. Who can you describe as a failure according to the scripture? There are those who are singing the lost song in a strange land. It's like that man that came out from the house of a prostitute. And as he was adjusting his trouser, he began to sing. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. So the brother that had him singing that song said, Oga, this song that you are singing is <laughs> a good song. And it's a song that a believer sings. But you are coming out from the house of the person. And you are even adjusting your, your trousers. He said, it is well. <laughs> that man <laughs> is a failure. Singing the lost song in a strange land. Who can you describe as a failure? According to the scripture, they are those who wanted to be what God did not create them to be. You look at somebody else and you said, I, I wish, I wish I, I, I'm just like that person. You look at the person and say, oh, I, and I like this man. This man is tall and I'm short. I wish that I am tall. You are queuing behind Lucifer. Who said, I want to be like God. And that was not the plan of God for him. Those who want to be what God did not create them to be, they are resounding failure. The way you are has a purpose. If you are tall, it is not by accident. God designed you to be like that. If you are fat, it is not an arrow. God designed it for you to be like that. If you check the story of Paul, when he described Paul, we are told that Paul was a short man. Not tall, a short man. And because he was a short man, there was a time that they wanted to kill him. They have to put him inside a basket. Adibi was a tall man. How would Paul escape? Let somebody shout hallelujah. How can you describe a failure according to the Bible? It is those who are living a double life. In church, you can sing all the praises and all the songs. And outside, you are singing the bidu. In fact, you master it in your brain that you don't even have to look at the lyrics. You are neither hot or cold. We call you Peter. We call you Samuel. But your behavior is like Jezebel. You are a resounding failure as far as the Bible is concerned. Who can you describe as a failure? They are those who are toying with opportunities. Toying with opportunities. If there was a man in the Bible that wasted his opportunity, and any time I read about him, I always pray, pray that, Oh, Father, don't let my life be like this man. Judas Iscariot. He had a close contact with Jesus. He sat physically under his teachings. He was among the people that, that, that said to Jesus, Jesus, they must bow before us as we command them in your name. And Jesus told them, he said, 
Don't rejoice because demons bow before you. But rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. Meaning that at that particular time, the name of Judas was in the book of life. He was called by Jesus to be among his disciples. Remember, there was a man that came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you. And Jesus said, no, 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 you don't follow me. Leave, just go away. In the case of Judas, it was Jesus himself that called him. What a great golden opportunity. He was given an important assignment among disciples. He was in charge of money. For you to know how Jesus loved this man so much, you don't give your money to someone that you don't trust. Jesus trusted him so much and he said, Judas, be in charge of my money. He was among the disciples that distributed the multiplying fishes and bread. He saw the miracle in his hand. In fact, the fish and the bread multiplied in his hand. He was among those who gave out the food. In Luke chapter 9 verse 1, Jesus called the 12 disciples and he gave them power and authority. Judas was among them. He gave them power. He gave them authority. Judas was among them. In fact, the name of Judas means praised. But with all these great opportunities, he failed destiny. He got lost forever. Those who toy with opportunity are senior students in the school of failure. Opportunity is taking advantage of God's gift upon your life. Opportunity is knowing what to do at the right time and doing it. Opportunity is favorable allowance that God has given to you. Being alive today is an opportunity to correct the wrongs in your life. Listening to this message now is an opportunity so that you can take steps. You are not in this service today by mistake. God is giving you an opportunity to get out from the school of failure. Jesus was crucified between two thieves. It was a golden opportunity for those two men to secure their destinies. But only one got it. He said, Jesus, remember me when you get to your kingdom. Which means that that man had been hearing the preaching of Jesus before. How did he know that Jesus had a kingdom? The other man was making jests. If you are the son of God, release us and release yourself. Then we will know that you are the son of God. But this other man said, shut up. Shut up. What we are receiving as punishment, uh, it is what we deserve. But this man is innocent. Why these two men were talking, Jesus was watching. Jesus was listening to their conversation. And then the man talked to Jesus and said, remember me, when you get to your kingdom, at that level, Jesus opened his mouth and said, today, an opportunity showed up. And that man did not toy with it. He grounded it. Jesus said, today, you shall be. Oh, today, no confession of sin. Say, today, no deliverance. Ah, ah. today, no water baptism. Eh? Today, no Holy Ghost baptism. No speaking in tongues. No joining of any church. Jesus said today. And when Jesus speaks, no power, no demon can stop it. He said today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That man is in heaven now. Enjoy the peace of heaven. Why? He did not toy with his opportunities. Opportunities can be wasted. Opportunities can be transferred. 
Opportunities can be abused. Opportunities can be neglected. Opportunities can be killed. There are three things that cannot come back to you. Once they go, they go. That's it. Number one is the spoken word. Number two is the time that is past. And number three is neglected opportunities. Those who neglect opportunities, they are resounding failure. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Hear me. The school of failure has a very large student. And unfortunately, many who claim to be Christians are in that school. Today, you must remove yourself completely from the circle of failures and move into the circle of those who experience success and victory. Bow down your heads now. And speak to the Lord. Something must happen to me. Talk to the Lord right there. Thank you, Jesus. Musika tanda ribu to shikete yene mo. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Shall we all rise up, please? Very quickly, there is no time to waste. There are three prayers that I would like you to pray. And remember, if you notice that this element of failure are there in your life, don't deceive yourself. You can pray yourself out of that circle. And that's why God has brought you here today. You must manifest this year. No matter the antics, no matter the operations, no matter the devices of the enemy, whatever they must have done to stop you from manifesting, that thing will scatter in the name of Jesus. With a very loud voice, with power and with strength, can you shout this loud and clear? Spirit of failure. I didn't hear your voice at all. Is that the best that you can say? Put fire into it now. My life is not available. Die in the name of Jesus. Spirit of failure. My life is not available. Masike tandari poko sheke tayalaba. Mandala kaba bonto seke tenere bonto shutiana. In Jesus. Mighty name, we pray. Open your eyes and look at me. There are some prayers that you pray. You yourself, you know that this prayer is not going anywhere. You yourself, you believe that the way I'm praying, I don't think this prayer will go beyond it. The prayer that shakes the gate of hell. They are prayers that your body, soul, and spirit will know that, yes, 
I am going. Can you imagine the way he was? Putting his head between his knees and commanding the heavens to open. Can you imagine the way Jacob prayed? He prayed for six hours, non-stop. And he was wrestling with an angel. Do you think that kind of prayer is the prayer that you pray and your body will not know, your soul will not know, and your spirit will not know? The angel that came to bless him, God sent an angel to bless him, and the angel wanted to depart without blessing him. He had to arrest the angel with prayer. When you pray like a weakling, when you pray as if you don't have strength, then that prayer too will lack strength. I want you to double your aggression. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faith. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. What we need to do more than singing, than teaching, than preaching is prayer. Close your eyes again. There is somebody here. Heaven is waiting for you to cry to the heavenlies. In this second prayer, say, Arrow of failure. Arrow of failure. Your, time Your time is up. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus. Get out of my life. That is how to do it. Aha. 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 That's right. That's right. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Masike tani rebe kosho to yalaba. Arrow of failure. Get out of my life. Get out, 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 get out. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. There are five persons here. Look at what the Lord is saying. The Holy Ghost said, I should tell you that between now and the end of this January, you are going to experience something that will make you think that, oh, so. God lost me so much like this. And there is a man in this meeting. Hear what the Lord is saying. The Lord said that the mark of hatred that has been put upon you, that mark has disappeared just now. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is the last prayer now. Please pray it more than the way you pray the first one and the second one. As you pray it, you will begin to notice the hand of God manifesting, working on your behalf. Can you shout this loud and clear? I receive, I receive. success. I reject, I reject failure. failure. Can, you, can you shout to let me hear your voice? I receive success. I reject failure. Can you see it like you?